This video is proudly sponsored by New Type. Tools, accessories, model kits, these guys have it. Hop over to NewTypesHQ.com and use promo code UTAKABUTTER for 10% off on your next purchase. Hey, what's going on my dudes and dudettes and welcome back to another exciting build from the good folks from Bendai, Japan. So why don't we get started with the 1-100 scale master grade Sazabi Verka. And without further ado my dudes and dudettes, let's get to it. Welcome back my dudes and dudettes to the most requested and definitely one of the most demanding masquerades that I've been asked to build for this YouTube channel for quite some time. So literally today marks the fifth anniversary for me to build Gunpla. And building Gunpla back in the day was relatively new to me. I didn't know what a, a difference between an SD kit or a master grade or a high grade or a real grade. You know what I'm talking about. It's very confusing and it's a bit overwhelming. So one day I hop onto Amazon.com to see what was the most popular Master Grade out there and thus I build my very first Verka kit which was the Saza B Master Grade Verka. Now the one thing I love about this kit, it literally broke my fears when it came to putting water slide decals. I didn't know how to put them on there correctly, I didn't know you had to use an exacto blade to cut the pieces out, I thought scissors was the correct way to do it, which is it's not. But at the same time it was my second introduction on how to do some light weathering. But the one thing I always told myself if I ever got any better would I actually take it to the next level and paint it the way how I envision it not like everything how everyone else does like these bright fluorescent candy coats dark coats you know something that really pops out the original natural colors for this model kit so in this particular build I'm gonna be implementing at least four to three different types of reds to make these areas really pop out while at the same time adding a little bit more custom flare with LED lights emphasizing the head and the thrusters on the ankles and the backpack unit I'm not gonna be putting LED lights in every single thrusters because it's just gonna look ridiculous. So what are we going to expect for this box? Right off the bat you're going to get a good glimpse of what you can expect for weapon accessories. Everything down to the long rifle, beam rifle, the funnel, the shield, the two beam tomahawks, and the beam saber. While at the same time giving you a beautiful layout of the front back side of the Saza B itself. But by far the one thing I absolutely love about these Verk Hot Kits, besides its absurd amount of water slide decals, is its attention to detail with open and closed hatches for exposing the inner frame of the Gundams. Now, this particular inner frame is nothing to brag about, it's very bare bone, nothing really too crazy, nothing too complicated, but it exposed just enough to add that nice custom flair to it, which I absolutely love. So, enough about that, what's inside the box? Right off the bat, you're going to be happily introduced by tons of different types of red runners, followed by some dark bright and and some salmon pink color runners at the same time but most importantly no verka kit is not complete without the insane chart of water slide decals and this particular mobile suit is packed to the brim with tons of water slide decals i tell you what next up we have the instruction manual which by far it is no stranger to me because the design aesthetic is very identical to the new gundam i built four months ago so I'm actually feeling quite comfortable with this particular manual. First page up gives you a beautiful illustration of the sides of both front and back, while at the same time emphasizing a unique gimmick for this model kit, which is exposing the cockpit area, which is the head. While at the same time giving you a small glimpse on what you can truly do to expose those little small little inner frame areas, everything down to the ankle, skirt, as well as the shoulders. As for the following page, once again giving you a front backside view of the mobile suit itself, and at the same time giving you an introduction of two little figurines that does come with this. But the one thing that definitely bugs me about this particular model kit is it does not, I repeat, does not come with an LED light unit, especially if you're spending close to like 120 bucks. It would have been nice if it included. But probably by far the one thing that definitely bugs me the most is the figuring for the cockpit area. You can't put the cockpit in where it's originally designed for, which is the head. So it's pretty much there as an accessory. Maybe it's designed for you to do like a diorama when Char versus Armuro in the final showdown. I don't know, it, it just seems like an afterthought. As for the instruction manual itself, it's pretty straightforward, nothing crazy, nothing over the top. Just giving you a good glimpse of exposing certain areas to pull off that really cool dynamic poses, while at the same time introducing the final page showing you how to put the water slide decals and an absurdly big color chart to do some custom painting. So from first glance, it does look extremely intimidating because you're working with four to three different types of shades of reds, which can be confusing when you're putting this guy together for the very first time. But not to fear, there are other classic color pieces that definitely help separate that confusion, followed by a new different color runner, which is like these nice metallic silver pieces for specific key frames for this mobile suit, followed by the classic gray pieces for the traditional inner frame pieces, which again, nothing too crazy to brag about the inner frame for this particular mobile suit, more gray pieces for weapon accessories, 
accessories as well as the skirt areas, some dark pieces for the backpack unit as well as for the shield itself, and the ever so classic yellow and orange pieces for thrusters and small little weapon accessories, followed by not pre-molded hands but at the same time pre-assembled hands in which gives you great articulation but you got to be very delicate on how you really pose them, followed by a small assortment of clear pieces which is pretty limited for this particular mobile suit. The only clear piece you really need to worry about is the actual eye unit itself, followed by the exact same time you're going to get a handful of the runners and then the shield itself, but definitely one part I do love about this kit is these gnarly neon green translucent pieces that are going to be used for the weapon accessories, which I think it's a nice touch-up for this particular mobile suit. Now, as always, before I get started doing any kind of custom paint, I need to evaluate how I'm going to put the LED light inside the head. Now, originally, it just had a simple light piping system that worked from the base up to the ball and then straight shooting light towards the eye. The LED light for the Bendai is pretty limited to the point of how bright it is. At the same time, it's prone to flickering, so I'm just going to put a chip LED light in there to make it look illuminate the way I want it. But by far, the most challenging part for this mobile suit is not working with one, not two, not four, but five different types of reds. So to create less of a headache for myself, I'm only going to work with at least three different types of red that make this guy look really, really cool and menacing looking.
deserve all the war Cause your heart's made of gold
right, my dudes and dudettes, as this video is wrapping up, I want to share with you guys my thoughts and impressions about this model kit. And there's a lot of goods and there's a lot of bads. So first and foremost, I know there's a handful of you out there asking yourself, why did you go with a color scheme that was uh, a bright orange or a, a habanero red orange to, instead of going like with a bright or softer red one i want to do something different i didn't want to do like what every gundam builder does out there once again doing candy coat reds and dark reds and darker darker reds i wanted something that had like a nice color balance to it and when i was looking through the instruction manual i noticed that the original color scheme for the sazby was like a bright reddish orange i understand that that's not probably the original design they went with it but something about that color scheme really gravitated towards me and i really wanted to put an emphasis on that particular color scheme while at the same time working with flat reds and then darker burgundy reds to make them harmonize together and i think i did a quite a good job with that so that's the reason why i went with that color choice um probably by far the one thing that definitely bugged me with this model kit was the choice of figurines now this kit does come with two unique figurines but at the same time, there is no emphasis at all to encourage you to do any kind of custom painting. One literally broke by the time I took it out, while the other one literally is stuck in a bowl. And when it's stuck in there, it's no different from putting a figurine inside a copied area and then he's gone. I would have loved if they took that little figurine and did something really unique with it. And my theory is... In the design process, the Sazabi Ver cockpit was probably supposed to be a little bit more bigger to house that little cockpit figurine in there. That's my theory. There's a good possibility this kit was supposed to be a perfect grade, but that never happened. So that's what I said earlier on in the video. It seemed like an afterthought. Next up is definitely a really concerning spot when it comes to doing custom painting is paint chipping. Now, when I paint my kits, I make sure I apply one to two, three different types of coats on there to protect the paint from chipping. But since these pieces are so tightly compact to one another and areas shift upward, they shift downward and they pivot left and right, forward and back, you are going to get tons of paint scraping and chipping. And that is just, oh my goodness, it is so infuriating. If you put like close to 10 hours straight painting these pieces together and then find out at the very end that something chipped or scraped, you're going to be pretty, you're going to be feeling pretty defeated at that point. You really are. At that point, there is no point of putting this model kit in action poses because when you do that, you're at the risk of causing more paint chipping. And last and finally for the negativity is action poses now this particular kit does not really require you to do any kind of action poses you can just put it on your shelf and you're done but for me i like to put these guys in dynamic poses and make them look really cool the downside is you need a specific adapter with a specific action base to make this guy levitate from the ground up unfortunately this kit does not come with an action base and you're going to have to shell out at an additional 15 dollars it would have been nice if the kit came with it less of a headache but I'm pretty sure there's a handful of other builders that don't really think about that when they build these kits. It's an afterthought. So I can let that slide. I can totally let that slide. But overall, my experience building this kit after five years was really enjoyable. I had a lot of fun putting the water slide decals. Again, I had a lot of fun experimenting with different types of shades of red. It was enjoyable and a treat. And I look forward to celebrating another five years of building more Gunpla. And like that, my dudes and dudettes, we have reached the end of this video. And I want to take the time to say thank you guys so much for like, commenting, and subscribing to this video. But most importantly, thank you guys so much for thumbs up in this video. It helps the channel grow tremendously. And as always, I will catch you dudes and dudettes on the next video. Later.